Hello, and welcome to day 21 of the Sailor Time to Pause audio advent calendar. Today we'll hear the Christmas story continue as the next part is read to us by Annette Allen, and following that our daily thought will be brought to us by Anne Howlett Foster, who attends our church in Cambridge. 1 John 4, verses 7-10 to Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Advent is about preparation and I just can't get Mary out of my mind. How on earth could she be prepared for what was to come? Mary was a girl of incredible faith and courage who grew into a woman who experienced such great joy and pain. I love the writing of Adrian Plass, and many years ago I came across a pack of his poems that came with artwork by Ben Eccleston called Words from the Cross very powerful words and art that challenge me to this day. So I was thrilled to find one of my most loved poems from the pack, a poem about Mary's anguish as she watched her son die, included at the end of one of the chapters of an Advent book that Adrian Plass had written. So I'm here to share with you Mary's story from the book, And Jesus Will Be Born. Now, I know you all think I was really brave and sweet, but, well, you don't really know me. I'll tell you something, by the time Joseph and I arrived in Bethlehem, after a horrible, long, bumpy journey on a donkey, I wasn't just fed up, I had had enough. I was cold, I was smelly, I was tired. And have you ever tried riding a donkey when you're nine months pregnant? No? will take my advice. Don't bother. I was upset as well, if I'm honest, a bit confused. I even thought sometimes I might have got it all wrong and maybe there hadn't been an angel at all. It just wasn't making any sense. Mind you, I'd realised right from the beginning that it wouldn't be easy, telling Joseph and my mum and dad, but God had sorted all that out just like Gabriel said he would. And Joseph was as excited as me about the baby belonging to God and everything. But, well, I didn't want to complain, but this bit was just horrible and I felt like bawling my eyes out. Hormones, I suppose, although I'd never heard of them at the time. And you know what? It got worse. We hadn't been able to hurry, you see, with me having to keep getting off that wretched donkey to have a little walkabout on the way. So by the time we got there, everywhere was full. I never forgot poor Joseph trailing from one end to the next and me feeling if we didn't find somewhere soon, God's baby was going to be born in the street. Nowadays, we've been asking why God blew his budget on an angel and forgot to leave enough for bed and breakfast. Anyway, the moment when the innkeeper said we could camp in the stable if we wanted to was amazing. I mean, by then I didn't really care where we were so long as I could lie down. And to find ourselves in a place with lots of straw to make us cosy and the warm, huffy breath of the animals and even a manger to act as a cot when the baby arrived, well, it seemed like the Bethlehem Hilton. We didn't have any of them in those days either. (laughs) I remember Joseph and me having a lovely, it's all going to be all right sort of hug. And I tell you what, we didn't get there a moment too soon. And then, of course, the baby came. And I, I don't know, nothing matters much when it's all over. And you're actually holding the little scrap that comes from right inside you. There were moments later in my life, looking back, when I remembered that short time after Jesus was born as a golden time. One of the very few purely untroubled times from then really. 
the next 30 odd years. Oh dear, so much I didn't understand. So many little battles inside me between the handmaiden of the Lord, who knew she was part of something huge and remarkable that just called for obedience, and the mother of a son who I loved. I loved him so much and who seemed to be just diving into disaster. The cross was the worst, of course. A sword through my heart. And yes, it was exactly that. I stood and watched him die. It was horrible. I didn't want to be a branch of the vine or a part of the body or a sheep in the flock of the Good Shepherd or the Bride of Christ or a disciple or a servant or an inheritor of the kingdom or a citizen of heaven or visited by angels or greatly blessed or deeply troubled or someone else's mother. I just wanted to get my son down from that wooden thing and take him home and make him better and give him something to eat and hear him laugh and persuade him to give up being the Messiah and go back to carpentry. Afterwards though, when he came back, it was, well, in a way it was like being back in that stable all over again. Golden time cubed. Blessed among women. Yes, I was. And as we reflect on Mary's story, listen to the beautiful Graham Kendrick song, Thorns in the Straw. This is Philippa Hanna's recording where she sings with Graham Hendrick. And yet again we're reminded that Advent and Easter are inexorably linked. So bitter yet so sweet. Joys and tears. Glory and shame. Since the day the angel came, it seemed that everything had changed. The only certain thing child that moved within on the road that would not end winding down to Bethlehem so far away from home just a blanket on the floor of a vacant cattle store but there the child was born she held him in her arms and as she laid him down to sleep, she wondered, will it always be? So bitter, yet so sweet. And did she see them in the storm by his head? The virgin shall conceive God with us, Prince of Peace. Man of sorrow, strangest name, oh Joseph, there it comes again. So bitter, it's so sweet. And did she see?
She watched him through the years. Her joy was mingled with her tears. And she'd feel it all again the glory and the shame. And when the miracles began, she wondered, who is this man? And where will this all end? Until against the darkening sky, the sun she loved was lifted high. And with his dying breath, she heard him say, Father, forgive. And to the criminal beside, today with me in paradise. an advent blessing go out to celebrate in love and laughter go as lights for the world shine in the darkness go out act justly and walk humbly with our god go in the name of him who loved and laughed and who was the true light of the world and humbled himself as a manger child join us tomorrow on the podcast however you're listening We love sharing with you as we prepare for Christmas.